Is the older and popular Liquid Freezer 2 by Arctic still usable or worth buying? Should you be getting one if you ever find one on sale? Actually, this review of today's AIO liquid cooler should have come much earlier, but in the meantime Arctic happened to release the long-awaited successor, the Liquid Freezer 3. Nonetheless, today I'll be taking a look at the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 ARGB and letting it cool not only a Ryzen CPU, but also the toasty i9-13900K to determine whether the good reputation for the Liquid Freezer series is actually justified compared to competing models. This is also a good chance to collect test results and data so that I can compare it later on with a Liquid Freezer 3 whenever I get one. Today's AIO should come in somewhere in the range of 140 to 170 US dollars, depending on where and when you shop. Right now, prices have climbed due to this particular AIO being out of stock already in many places. You should definitely watch out not to overpay. So if you happen to find the predecessor on sale somewhere at a good price, how much cooling performance can you expect out of this thing? As usual with the Liquid Freezer 2 series by Arctic, the liquid cooling unit comes pretty much pre-assembled right out of the box. We are also getting the usual mounting kits, along with a little bit of thermal paste in a bag. What sets Arctic apart from the competition would be the radiator thickness, because while most 360mm AIO units are equipped with 27mm thick radiators, Arctic goes for a whopping 38mm. In terms of cooling performance, that should not be underestimated, but of course that also comes with a disadvantage in terms of compatibility and smaller, not so spacious PC cases. Such a beefier radiator not always fits into each and every case out there. However, it is to be assumed that this AIO is targeted towards a group of consumers that do have a pretty decent case to work with. Big praise for the fan and ARGB connectors that already are all wired and hooked up to each other. This helps a lot with cable management. All that remains for us to take care of are the 4-pin PWM pump and fan connector and the 3-pin 5V ARGB connector. However, it's only Arctic's own P12 PWM fans that light up. The pump unit does not feature any lighting whatsoever, but otherwise looks pretty spectacular although not necessarily in a good way as far as my taste is concerned. I don't really find the design aesthetically pleasing here, but to each their own. Nonetheless, thumbs up for this little extra gimmick here, the tiny VRM fan. A small breeze of air should therefore reach some of the VRM. Fortunately, that small 40mm fan is virtually inaudible even at its max speed. But if you would rather prefer to bring the fan to a standstill, you could in theory pull the plug at the bottom of the pump. And speaking of the pump, Arctic are using their own proprietary pump, so no copy-paste solution as seen with many acetic based AIOs out there. It has already been proven by many, Arctic pumps really pack a punch, and that at fairly low noise levels. Of course, the 450mm long tubing with that pretty snakeskin pattern, if you will, does stand out. I've always really liked that one since day one. The fittings on both the pump and the radiator, which look like cheap plastic, are less eye candy. Well, it's just cosmetics. However, the tubing does not allow to be adjusted in angle on the water block. The tubing cannot be adjusted that way. All common CPU sockets are supported, including LJ1700 and AM4, AM5 although the copper base surface isn't even that large. Now in order to be able to better cool the hotspots on specific AMD Ryzen CPUs, Arctic offers us the option of mounting the pump with an offset, which is recommended and actually the way I have tested. The installation onto both my AMD and Intel systems was in itself easy, but it took a little longer and was a little more complicated than with many AIOs of the competition, I will admit. I especially didn't like those sticky washers one has to use in order to protect the motherboard from scratches. That no longer really appears to be a super up-to-date way of mounting a cooler these days. The tests were once again carried out with the AMD Ryzen 7 3800X and the Intel Core i9-13900K, which however was limited to its official 253 watt power limit. Noise levels. 
everything set to the max speed leads to a reading of 46 decibels for the liquid freezer to 360 ARGB. This actually somewhat passes as relatively quiet. Of course, that's still clearly audible, but leans more towards quiet. In contrast, the Pure Loop 2 by Be Quiet with a 280mm radiator, for instance, that are two 140mm fans, is already 3 decibels louder. Temperatures at max fan speed with the AMD 3800X. Today's Arctic AIO lines up in the chart very expectedly. Needless to say, the 420mm version lands first place, but the 360mm version isn't even that far behind, although there are some strong models by competitors as well. Be Quiet and Enermax, for instance, and surprisingly also Cougar. However, no groundbreaking differences come to light here when having to cool the Ryzen 3800X CPU. So let's go ahead and increase the heat. Temperatures at max fan speed with the Intel 13900K. Starting with the Prime 95 stress test. Today's Liquid Freezer 2 unit is already overtaking the competition by a shockingly large margin. I myself was surprised by that. Apparently, the AIO handles such an Intel LJ1700 CPU pretty well. Of course, the radiator thickness of 38mm makes quite a difference too when testing over a longer period of time. If we move on to the Cinebench 2024 test, the AVX load seems to increase even further, only causing the temperatures to rise. But here too, the Liquid Freezer 2 shines, although we no longer report that big of an edge over the competition. Nonetheless, 3 degrees Celsius less on the Arctic model shouldn't be ignored. The unit by Arctic does indeed deserve its praise. Temperatures at a fixed 40 decibels. To be honest, things only really get exciting once we limit all CPU coolers to run at an identical noise level of exactly 40 decibels. Meaning, every cooler now is equally as loud or quiet in this particular test. Now, since the Liquid Freezer 2 already operates fairly quietly at max speeds to begin with, thanks to these quiet P12 PWM fans, the speed only needed to be reduced minimally to get down to 40 decibels. The temperature test goes to show an amazing gap now. The Be Quiet Pure Loop 2 with 280mm actually used to shine in this test, but Arctic goes one step further. Meanwhile, air coolers and one or the other 240mm AIOs are kinda struggling to keep the 13900K cool. If the test is now repeated at 40 decibels, but with Cinebench 2024, the gap seems to decrease again. Still, there are 5 degrees separating the Liquid Freezer 2 360 and the Pure Loop 2 280mm. The Cougar Poseidon GT360, on the other hand, only manages to keep up with the Be Quiet unit, but not with the Arctic one. Conclusion So it's pretty obvious. It's not without reason Arctic enjoys such a good reputation when it comes to their Liquid Freezer AIO series. The results speak for themselves. Admittedly, if you have to cool a CPU that isn't particularly running hot, the Arctic unit does not really show its full potential. However, once there's great heat output as seen with an i9-13900K or even 14900K by Intel, it becomes clear how much headroom the Liquid Freezer 2 360 actually offers. I want to emphasize once more that it's not only the pump and fans leading to that result, but more so the good overall package especially that 38mm thick radiator does wonders. This alone could explain the significantly large lead over the other cooling solutions tested. What makes Arctic's Liquid Freezer 2 series so special is the fact that it offers us enormous cooling performance at a very attractive price. There's also a 6 year warranty to be kept in mind. These things are all very tempting. However, Arctic have been struggling for a long time when it comes to their design language. It's sometimes a wild mess and not exactly what many would describe as aesthetically appealing. This mainly concerns the appearance of the pump unit, but then again, we are not exactly talking of ugly either, ultimately a matter of taste. Although the Liquid Freezer 2 360 ARGB is no longer truly up to date per se, without the slightest doubt, it deserves a recommendation. At this point, I do not know how well the successor, Liquid Freezer 3, performs, but I'll put it this way, at the right price, you certainly can't go wrong with the older version of it. 
Now, what about you? Would you consider picking up the quote-unquote old, now outdated Liquid Freezer 2, now that the Liquid Freezer 3 is out? How many of you actually own the Liquid Freezer 2, and what are your experiences with it? If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hammer down on the like button, and if you didn't, there's still the dislike button. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and until the next one.